my name is Fatma and today I wanted to share my story with you. But before we start, I do want to warn you, it's going to be very, very long. So I suggest you grab a cup of tea and settle in for we are going for a very long ride down my memory lane. So now that we settled, let's get started. My story starts, particularly this story, starts in the summer of 2008 when I moved to Canada at the right age of 16. It was sudden, to say the least. One day I woke up and my mom just told me that we are moving to the other end of the world, um, or other side of the world, sorry, in two weeks. And I was shocked. I was in denial. I had never moved before. I have always had the same group of friends. We grew up together. I was always in the same neighborhood. And yeah, I always knew myself as the girl who lived in Karachi, right in front of the sea, not someone who lived in Canada. So yes, I was shocked. I was in denial. I also thought that my mom was joking, that we were just going to Canada for a visit and we're going to come back. There's no way we are moving to the other end of the world. I keep saying other end of the world, other side of the world. <laughs> I also remember crying on the plane throughout the journey and the steward kept bringing me drinks and candy to calm me down and cheer me up but to no avail I kept crying because I really thought my life was over like I have friends I had school everything my whole world was in Karachi so my mom why would she do that to me so yeah I kept crying but you know the journey ended we landed and once we landed, it all seemed so alien to me. It was actually worse than I imagined. I mean, not really worse, but like to, to a 16 year old, it was bad. The air, air smelled different, it was cooler, it was lighter. People looked like they were out of a movie because, you know, you need to consider that I was only exposed to one race my entire life. Anything, anyone who looked different than me was just part of a movie or a show that I was watching. And to seeing them in real life was just so, it was an in interesting experience to say the least. Um, but yeah, like our uncle took us to our first apartment. It was a two bedroom um, at 800 bucks a month, which is seems very little now. But the sound, at the time, it seemed like a lot for something that was so small. And we stayed there for six months. Um, I remembered my first days being so, so gloomy. I was feeling hopeless. It was sad. I was living in this two bedroom, you know, apartment where we slept on mattresses with no furniture other than that. And to pass my days, I used to often walk to the central library and I would bring back two to three books that I sprinted through in a matter of days because that was my only source of entertainment. I was not really into, you know, there was no social media at the time. I had no friends. So all I did was get lost in books and my mom would give my brother and I a dollar a week to treat ourselves to whatever we could afford with it. And I could only afford a donut from Tim Hortons, so I would just get that. And that used to be the highlight of my week because I got to eat a donut. Um, but yeah, once the summer was over, we had to gear up for school. Again, that was a whole new thing for me. I had so many thoughts at the time. I did not know what to expect, uh, considering, you know, I had always been part of the same group of people because went to the same school with the same people for 16 years. I never needed to make new friends, so I never really learned how to make new friends. So, you know, think about all of this, I, I got like, it gave me a lot of anxiety. I also didn't have any warm clothes because coming from Pakistan, it's always hot there. The summers in Canada seem like it's winter in Pakistan. So I only had, like, I had to resort to the same three sets I had, which were very warm clothes. Um, sorry, they weren't very warm clothes. They were just like a padded hoodie and somewhat of a warm jacket and sweats, I think. Um, but despite all of these harrowing thoughts, I went to school because I had to. It was tough. I had no friends and it sucked at, you know, at the time because I didn't even know how to make any. I ate lunch alone in the library, reading novels that helped me escape to much cheerful, magical realms and past time in a much, I guess, or less miserable ways. Um, I couldn't concentrate on school, of course, so that caused me to lag behind. 
which crushed my, crushed my soul even more because I kept going to the office, the teachers telling me that I need to do better or I'm going to fail. And that just, yeah, it was a cherry on top. But um, I also remember once I even heard two girls whispering, they were sitting behind me and they were commenting on how I keep wearing the same set of clothes. And they kept saying like, why did she do that? And that was enough to send me running back home in tears, vowing to myself that I will never go back. It was, yeah, it was tough, but I had to go back because again, it's school, I can't skip it. My mom would never let me skip school. She's a doctor, she really cares about education and she was not gonna let me just cry about girls commenting on me wearing the same clothes. She's like, you have two sets and you wash them and they're fine, nothing's wrong with them. Off to school you go, and I did. Somehow I was able to finish my semester. I mean, I only failed two classes, but hey, I passed three, so three is more than two, and that was good enough for me. Uh, we then had to move as we couldn't stay in the basement for too long. My parents realized that, you know, my brother, myself, and my mom, and my dad, four people in a two-bedroom basement that was dinky and gloomy, it was not gonna help us, you know, maintain our mental health. So it was a brighter chapter. We moved to a townhouse with three bedrooms, so we had our own rooms, which was good, but... We couldn't afford it as my parents, you know, despite them wanting us to have a better experience in the new place, um, it was more of a risk for them because they couldn't really afford it. But they did take the risk nonetheless. Um, and I am so grateful for them for always trying so hard. Um, my new school was actually better. I was able to make friends and I finally started to feel like I was settling in, which was huge because for six months, I felt like a fish out of water. I did not see any future of myself, like looking any brighter. Um, so finally starting to feel like I was selling in was great. I started to feel at home and I really, really started to believe that things will be better now. They were, but not for long. My dad decided to leave because he just couldn't, you know, tackle the whole foreign world, selling in, new language, all of that. He just he wanted to leave, so he gave us an option to go home with him, but my mom wanted to stay, and so we decided to stay with my mom. However, my mom also fell into depression, which was not fun. I was only 17 at the time, my brother was 13, and no, he was 14, and the winter got worse, and we started to run out of money, which was not fun, as my the only adult in the family was in bed, depressed, and we didn't know what to do. So I kept looking for jobs, but couldn't find anything decent. I didn't have any experience. I was new to the country, just couldn't get a job. Plus I was 17, so my options were very limited. But finally I did get a job. It was, you know, at a restaurant. I was being paid on the table. I was working 12 hour days, getting paid way under minimum wage, but I was happy because I was making some money. It was able to help me, you know, tackle my own expenses if not the families and that was a little less burden off my mom's chest and that was good it finally came us came time though for us to not be able to make rent and so we needed to leave but we had no place to go but luckily my friend's family were kind enough for us to stay with them until we figured it out and i'm so so grateful for them so if you're watching this thank you so much again for being that beam of light um it helped us you know tied us over for a few months during those few months, my mom decided to go back to Pakistan to see if she can sell some of our property and bring back some money that can help us, you know, maintain our life here. Um, she was able to, but not, but not a lot, only a little bit of it, which helped us find a one-bedroom apartment for the three of us to live in. It was very tiny. It was way smaller than the basement we were living in, but it was our own place, and, you know, our our... Priorities at the time changed. We were just grateful to have our own place and we were happy. It was nice and We had a new start However, again, our mental health started to decline as the place was too small um, I had to be up late to work on my schoolwork, which kept my mom up late, which was not good for her and my brother Yeah, it was just not Great being you know in a small one bedroom with three of us So future started to look grim again and my mom decided to travel back home one more time so she can find, you know, a better buyer for a property and this time she had better luck because she was able to sell and while she was gone, she she was gone for months, um, leaving my 15 year old brother and my 18 year old self all by ourselves, 
by the time I had found a job at McDonald's, which was so much better because I was making minimum wage at least, and the work didn't seem as tough, ironically. Um, and so it was a massive, massive win for me. I was able to spend my time working, making a good pay for myself at least, and to support myself. However, it was keeping me away from school. Um, like I was barely making it through and by now my dreams had been severely crushed and I did not dream of anything more than just having my own tiny place and being able to make minimum wage, which I thought at the time McDonald's could, you know, meet. Like my job at McDonald's was able to make me a living where I can just rent out one bedroom, apartment, tiny one and live my life like that and I was happy with that. That was honestly my dream at the time because life just seemed so grim that I didn't want to ask too much, you know. Um, I also remember often walking, going for walks in my neighborhood, watching families together safe and happy and wondering if that could ever be my reality again. You know, I'd often imagine families going into their homes, having a wonderful life, um, kids having their own rooms and never worrying about, you know, if they'd have a home or roof over their heads the next month or not. Um, you know, I would often picture myself having my own room as that seemed like a big, big ask and never being bothered by trivial issues like making rent or being able to afford food. Like all of that seemed like a dream to me. So that's all I dreamed of. That's all I dreamed of at the time. I just wanted to make enough money to have my own place, to just being able to afford food and yeah. That's all I cared about. So it was no surprise that being let down life so, for so long um, at the age of 18, I didn't expect myself to be worthy enough to even go to university. Um, so I didn't bother. I really did not bother. I slacked in school, didn't care. All I cared about was just passing barely so I can just graduate from high school. Um, so when all my friends were starting to apply for university, I just focused on getting more shifts at McDonald's. That's all I cared about. Like, I did not care about tests or getting good grades. I'm like, you know what, I'm passing, it's fine. I just wanted to make more money, so I'm just gonna take double shifts at McDonald's. My mom, who was struggling to find us a better home, to live in a better place, she was unable to focus on my academics, so she didn't realize that I was slipping like that. And I do not blame her. I do not, because she was just focusing on <laughs> bigger problems. Um, so I slept even more and more until one day I entered my first art class, which I was forced to take, by the way. Um, I needed to get an art credit to graduate high school. So I took it on. I'm like, fine, just give me any art class. So I took intro to art. Um, it was a grade 10 course while I was in grade 10, 12 because I had skipped. Uh, I was in grade 11 when I moved here, so I had not taken any art classes in Pakistan. So. I had to take one and that was the moment that changed everything for me. Everything changed in that moment. As soon as I walked into the class, it was almost like I was awoken from a deep slumber. Like I was asleep all this time or in some other world or something or maybe like, I don't know, in some dungeon or something and someone just shined this light on me. And I remembered so, so clearly that for the first time in my new life, in my Canadian life, I was aware and present. I was not lost in some world in my head. Uh, my art teacher, who is now a dear friend and my life mentor, and I'm so grateful for her, so if she's watching this, thank you, thank you so much for introducing me to the class, um, to that curriculum and sending me off to on my first art project, which was my first art adventure, which I miserably failed. I did not do well. I, I'm i pretty sure I, I failed the grade, but she encouraged me to keep going and she keep pushed me to do better because she told me that I'm talented, that I have what it takes. I just need to focus and make this my mission and not falter from it. So that's exactly what I did. I started taking interest in my life again, in my schoolwork again, in my academics again, and I started caring for what I wanted in my life. I started caring about my future again because I started to see my potential, that I'm not just some worthless person, low life who is not worthy of anything. No, I have dreams and I realized them. I realized that I wanted more, that I wanted to spend my life 
you know, doing better things rather than just spending hours dying at a minimum wage job. I wanted to be an artist. I wanted to be a liver, if that's, wow, not a liver, but someone who lives life. Sorry about that awkward moment. I have a lot of awkward moments, but... <laughs> So yeah, so I decided to, you know, that I want to do more in life. And yes, while I fucked up my last year in university, I mean, in high school, I decided to come back for an extra year to make up for my poor grades. Um, so in order to go to the university of my choice, I had to take extra credits outside of art, like calculus, history, um, etc. I was always good in English, so I didn't have to retake English. But I had to take other, like, math courses, science courses again. And the more I studied, the more I remembered how much I loved studying before I moved to the new country. Like, I was a very good student back in, you know, Pakistan. I had, like, I had multiple A grades and O levels, which was tough. And I used to be a student, and I forgot about that. So, you know, being introduced to academics again was so refreshing because I realized how much I loved studying. And so my dreams began to evolve. Like, my grades evolved, which expanded my choices. I had, I no longer had to constrain myself to community colleges, nor mediocre universities. I could actually go to a university of my choice. So I started asking myself, what did I really want? And so I made the decision to go to business school instead, which was very random, but I decided that because I want to be financially savvy. I want to be business savvy so I can sell my art. That was what I was thinking at the time. Like, I know how to make how to make art, I know how to do this, but I don't know how to sell, how to be business minded, because I've never taken any business course in my life. So I decided to go to business school. It was so random, but I did it. And while I'm so happy I did that, um, it wasn't a rosy decision because business school brought with it so much of gloominess and struggles. It was not fun at all. It was not fun like art. And it did crush my soul every now and then. It was a lot tougher than I imagined, um, but I pushed through. I went for regular counseling to keep my mental health in check because I knew that depression ran my family. I did not have depression, but I did want to make sure that I didn't develop it. So I constantly went for um, psych evals, counseling, made sure that my mental health was in check, went to the gym, um, socialized. My family at the time, while being able to have a home, finally, was unable to support me you know, in my university career, so I had to take on three different jobs because each job would only give me more, like two, three hours or five hours, so I need to make at least 20 hours. So I took three jobs. I remember having a night shift at McDonald's because they would only give me the night shift. And I had a morning shift at another job, which was a media center office, like I was front desk. And I remember, you know, sometimes I would have to finish my night um, shift at 7 a.m. So it was 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. shift at McDonald's and go straight to my 8 a.m. shift or 9 a.m. shift um, to open the office. So I only get like two hours in between where I would just like eat, have breakfast, just sit and calm myself or just commute. Um, so I wasn't sleeping and nor was I eating properly, but I was getting it through. I did make it fun by socializing and partying. I would party every weekend. It wasn't great for my personal development or my mental health, to be honest, but it did help me distract myself from my grim reality of the time. You know, I was telling myself like at least I'm partying, at least I have friends, at least I'm taking pictures and making it look like I'm living a life. So it helped. It wasn't a great healthy coping mechanism, but it did help me cope, which is all I needed at the time. So four years passed like that. I graduated. I got a salary job. I thought to myself, if this was it, it was going to be rainbows and sunshine from here, but it was not. Um, I started to hate my job because I had nothing to do with art, anything. It was strictly clerical. It was a marketing job, but what we were selling was not fun. So it was not fun. And the commute was too long. It was an hour and a half one way, so three hours long, stuck in tra traffic in a car. Work was tedious. And I really, really wanted to feel grateful because at least I was not financially struggling. So I forced myself to feel grateful, to like it, but I couldn't my mental health started to dwindle again and I was just struggling again and I was telling myself that something's wrong with me, something's... Why is this happening to me? Um, also, while I was in my final year of university, my high school teacher, who had become a mentor at the time, pushed me to apply to a very prestigious art school, which I had no hope or expectation to get into. Um, 
because, you know, not only was I struggling with my mental health, I had jobs, I couldn't go to the interview, the in-person interview for my portfolio. So I just mailed in my portfolio and I told myself that, you know, if I got in, I got in, it's fine. And much to my surprise, I got in. They liked my art that I submitted and told me that I could study in any program offered by the university. And I was ecstatic and in awe. And I was like, what? Like, I... Again, you know, forgot that I am worthy, that I am an artist. I had forgotten about all of that. And I couldn't even fathom being an artist again. So it was huge for me. So I started my second degree. Um, initially, I was going to go into fine arts photography, but I decided to go into design because I thought that would be better to, for my career. So I enrolled in a Bachelor of Design, specializing in graphic design. And I started to do that full time because I needed um, financial aid and they would only give me if I were a full time student. So again, it became tough for me because I was struggling full time school with full time job. My grades were affected. My job was being affected. I wanted it all so bad, but I couldn't do it. So I had to pick one and I picked the school. I picked art and quit my job. And while the time everyone was telling me that I was being dumb, I am so glad I did that. I did find an easier gig. Um, it was a social media management job full time. Um, it paid less than my previous job. It was more fun. It was more aligned because it allowed me to be creative. However, it was great, yes, but however, I was let go within three months. They didn't want like my work. And yeah, I was, I was sad, but I decided to take a month off because, you know, for the first time in my life, like since I was 16 and 17, I was 23 at the time. It was the first time in life that I was not worried about finances. Like my mom was doing well, like she was selling houses and she was making money. Um, and we were somewhat financially stable. We weren't thriving, but at least we were stable. And because I didn't have to worry about making rent or food or whatever, I decided to spend my days doing whatever the fuck I wanted for one month. And I did. I went out to the city, I explored, I took pictures, I even started a blog, this was like 2015. And my blog grew to my surprise, and I knew I wanted some to uh, sorry. I knew I wanted to support, uh, wanted something similar um, as a career. I wanted to pursue something similar, and you know something that would allow me to be my own boss while exercising my creativity and also making reasonable income. I didn't want to be rich, but I did want to be did want to be um, financially stable. So. Yeah, I decided to move to the city and <laughs> I found another job, but I had to, you know, I hopped three jobs and after hopping three jobs, I didn't realize it, blah, I decided that, you know, I need to pursue something of my own. I knew no matter how great a job I would get, it would always be less, like I wanted more. I wanted to, move. so that's why I decided to quit my job entirely and not look for another one. I moved back home to my mom, who I recently um, sold her an old house and was moved into a new house and she was doing well too. I spent my months soul searching and finding myself. I tried to monetize my blog, but to no avail. It was then that I joined a mastermind, a business mastermind, which opened my eyes to so many possibilities. I realized that I was infinite. I had skills, I had knowledge, I had experience all of which were enough to help my dream become a reality. I was, I was everything. I was a universe in itself. I did not feel less worthy. I did not feel less. Um, and that's how I started my entrepreneurial journey. I, you know, decided that I'm going to be more than just a blogger. I'm going to sell tangible, impactful offers. Um, and yes, there was a lot of trial and error. Uh, a lot of money involved, like I invested over $40,000 um, in coaching, maxing out my credit cards, which I do not recommend, by the way. I mean, I, it's something that I did, and I know it's not for everybody, so I'm not, this is not a financial advice. I do want to say that. It, I just wanted it so, so bad that I did not care about going in debt. So I took out money out of my credit line, line of credit, credit cards, spent 40 k in coaching, setting up my business legally, hiring a lawyer, accountant, hiring a team. Multiple pivots. I started as a freelance designer, transitioned to a coach, only to come back to design again. But this time, it was more about branding and as a studio rather than just a freelance random designer. Um, and it is only now, 13 years, th 13 and a half years, 
later that I'm finally feeling that I have a stable ground I can walk on that will lead me to my destinations because my dream has evolved and they are more than one destinations. It's not just one. It's a very rich experiential life that I want to cultivate for myself. And honestly, I know this is just a beginning. It's been tough so far, but it has helped me become a very skillful sailor. So I'm excited for this new venture across the new ocean. And I'm just glad to be out of the trenches. And my dear mother, who has been through so much to keep us, my brother and myself, safe and sound in a foreign country, which we now call our forever home, um, has her own one bedroom condo that she loves and decorates every day. And she's only a few blocks away from me and we meet every day, we talk about life, we, we're just living our life instead of just surviving it. And my brother, who has also graduated from the same university that I went to, he has his own apartment and his own thriving business, and he is just focusing on scaling, investing in stocks, thinking about the bigger picture of how he wants to live his life, like, grander, as opposed to just, like, worrying about, you know, if we can afford mac and cheese. Um, and just seeing how, you know, we all of us not only just made it out, but are now thriving is enough to make my heart sing with joy. So, wow, that was a lot. Um, so thank you so much for <laughs> sticking around till the end. Um, I'm grateful for you to listen to my story. Um, it was long. I had to shorten it a lot. Um, and I will be sharing more of it as I continue to make content, to tell my story. Um, but yes, I'm just glad for you to be here, for listening to it right till the end. It was a long story, so I appreciate it. I'm excited for this new chapter in my being, doing what aligns better with my soul, with my higher self, and soaring further along in my journey, discovering more magical, you know, amazing realms going on more adventures, taking more risks because I'm not in a survival mode, I'm more into thriving. So yeah, thank you so much for listening and I'll be sharing more on my YouTube channel, this being my first of many. So thank you so much and stay tuned for more.